Greetings. This is my weekend project here. This is a Quantar 800 megahertz base station. And it has been converted to 900 megahertz. And uh, I'm going to show. So, some strange things happen. I have the 100 watt PA in there. The fans run continuously, which is, um, I don't know, doesn't make any sense. Maybe I have something set wrong. Needed to bug it a little bit more. And um, as you can see, it's putting out 100 watts right on the money with the uh, 110 watt 800 megahertz PA. Um, it thinks it's a 900 megahertz PA now. So it is uh, responding to DPL. This is uh, W9CR testing. W9CR test one two, and uh, it's it's been modified pretty extensively here. <clears throat> um, I am having to feed it with an external reference oscillator input. That was a bit of a. I, I figured I'd be able to at least use the built-in one. Um, I need to see if I can custom make a code plug and force it in there using that reference. If it'll bitch about it or not, I, I think it'll be okay. I think it's a CPS thing because the the thing disappears. I might have to hack that. Um, I don't know, something just turned on saying it's failed now, so, uh, looks good to me. Oh, I know, I'm monitoring it, so, yeah, it did not like that, uh, I, I unplugged and plugged it back in, because the, the fans are not running, that's why it's on, because I, I disconnected the fans, so I could make a, uh, a YouTube video without the, uh, the fans running, that's why the fail light is on. Um, but the fans run continuously, which is strange, so. I don't know, maybe that's something, but let me uh, let me show you something here. Come this way, over to this thing, and uh, show you here. Actually. There we go. We can see it's working. I have a 30 dB pad on this. Now, the problem with this is if I go to modulation here, <coughs> excuse me, I'm fighting a wicked cough. Let me cue this down. Turn 220 down. That is. Uh, I don't know if that's something I did or, or what. There's certainly some microphonics there. I'll have to work on those. Um, I don't believe the original one had microphonics, but you know I didn't really check that 800 megahertz one first. Suppose I could put one in there um, and and give it a shot. But again, this is a proof of concept. Um, there's a lot of stuff that had to be done, and I'll show you that in a second here. So hold on. So first and foremost here we have the. Um, I'll see if I can get my light in here. We have the VCO on the receiver section, and you can see the um, pre-selector has all been taken out. Now, I did try, I got crafty, and I said I'm going to grind this thing down and make it work on frequency with a, a diamond grinder bit that I have. It's actually a really nice pre-selector. Problem is, I thermal shocked it, and uh, it broke, so... I have a number of these 800 meg ones, I'll give it a shot, but realistically, uh, you don't need that. Um, now, the one problem we did have is, let's see, this is the this is the, the receiver, so there's an image filter in here somewhere. The image filter uh, cuts off the upper end receive, but this, this is actually a wide band receiver. This, um, <coughs> that's that image filter right there. And that causes a loss of sensitivity as you get above 925, uh, or, or excuse me, 9, 914 or so. But this is actually wide band, more wide band than a 900 receiver uh, would be normally. And let me see if I can get some uh, video here. So that has been cut down. There's been some stuff done there as well. Uh, a couple things changed out. I, I'm, I'm going to document this as well. Um, PA ID, or the receiver ID was changed over there. Um, so I'll document this, and let me show you the uh, the exciter. And here we have the exciter. 
Uh, you can still see still I have my tape on there, so some of this might be causing the microphonics. This thing was kind of busted in the first place. And you can see the cut job that was done on the resonator there. Uh, a couple other things were changed out. Now there should be a cover that's on this as well. That's missing. I don't have that on there yet. And I, I you know, who knows? Um, I might put it back together and microphonics might go away. I don't know. Maybe I used a cheap capacitor in there and I'm having some piezo electric effect. Um, but there's that. There's some, some uh, ID bits that are changed over here. But there's really not much change in here other than shaving that down and a couple capacitor changes to get it there. The interesting thing is, is it's a it's a wideband receiver. You see, see, here's some of the ID stuff you got to change, but um, or a wideband. It, it'll actually uh, lock from 895 all the way up to 939. So that's uh, that's a pretty nice uh, 44 meg split. Um, oh, at, at nine volts. Now the thing is, when you put that that shield on there, it's going to raise the frequency some too, and you can uh, raise the frequency by trimming the capacitor. Um, this this one right here. Uh, where is it? Yeah, that one there. You can you trim. That's a laser etched one, but a Dremel works just fine, and it raises the frequency up a little bit because you probably don't need the low end frequency side. So that is uh, that's it. And you know, just to show you, I'm not BSing you. Um, let's see if you can read that. That is the 900, 800 megahertz ID. I believe there's one on the back here as well too. So. Uh, the PA actually is very easy uh, to convert. I'm not going to open that up, but it's it's just a matter of changing the ID bits. It, it works all the way up to 999 megahertz. There's an extra 2 dB of insertion loss uh, in the the final output uh, filter, but that's no big deal. So, anyways, that is a 800 to 900 megahertz conversion. And, you know, what's neat about this, it might actually work well for people still using a 12 megahertz split. So... Uh, there's certainly more work to be done here, but I know people have been hitting me up and asking about it. So, uh, you know, I, I, as soon as I have it working and repeatable and get a few of these on the air, I'm going to document it and do it in the same manner I did for the UHF ones. And the, the uh, I, I got to work on my 221 as well. That's actually, uh, well, there's parts of it up there. Uh, there's a PA I'm working on. That's, that's the, the holdout right now, but. Anyways, um, this is uh, the Quantar, and it's uh, 800 to 900. I just bought one for 300 bucks, so, you know, I got to get them working. Otherwise, I'll be out $300. Uh, 73 to everybody. This is uh, Brian Fields, uh, Amateur Radio Call Sign, W9CR.